Randomness in Hearthstone basically feels like a core mechanic in the game. Some randomness is really good for the game and some randomness is awful for the game. And this video will cover all of it. Your opinion on randomness might be a lot different than others when it comes to Hearthstone. Some people really like randomness because it adds a lot of fun to the game. Some people really hate it because it ruins the competitive nature of Hearthstone. But let me know what you think of randomness in a comment down below. Is it time already for you to subscribe? When it comes to randomness in Hearthstone, I think it's very good for the game, and the developers recognize that as well. Randomness is a way to generate brand new stories for players and add variety in a game like Hearthstone, which can be pretty consistent and therefore get pretty boring pretty fast if you did not have that variety. Unlike other card games like Magic the Gathering that has random resources that you need to draw out of your deck, Hearthstone is very consistent in the way that you get your resource, which is mana. You just generate one mana every single turn, which means the game kind of runs the risk of having every single game feel the exact same. For example, if every single game of Druid versus Warrior played out the exact same way, Hearthstone would just not be nearly as fun to play, so randomness is thrown in to make the game a little bit more picante. This is one of the reasons why auto battlers are so successful. The game plays out pretty similar every single time, but that randomness really adds a lot of decision making and a lot of variety to keep you coming back. Now, it is important to note that not all randomness is good randomness. There are cards that they they've added to the game that have been, well, really frustrating to play with and against because the random element can decide a game. But there's also a lot of really great instances where randomness is a really fun thing to have in Hearthstone. A good way to know the difference between good RNG and bad RNG is to understand how combat works in a card game. And I'm going to let Raynad explain this. So in a game like Magic, for example, you just attack with your dudes and then the defender gets to decide what minion trades with what minion because the defender assigns blockers. Now Hearthstone works the opposite way where the person attacking decides what minion attacks what minion. So the person attacking has the advantage because you decide what trades into what. And as the aggressor, you're going to have an advantage in Hearthstone. So why does that matter with RNG? Uh, well, it basically means that the nature of the game is a lot more snowball-y based on who has control of the board early. And uh, because of that, the RNG that affects the board early has a significant massive outcome on the outcome of the game. So with that being said from Raynad, let's look at some really good good examples of RNG and some really bad examples. Let's talk about Knife Juggler first, because this was a very prominent card in the older days of Hearthstone that could easily decide the outcome of a game very early on. If the Knife Juggler's knives hit your opponent's minions instead of your opponent's face, it was a huge advantage for you because potentially you just control the board from Knife Juggler from there on out, and you have a huge advantage in the early game that could snowball out of control. I think the most frustrating part of this RNG is the lack of agency from the player. There is no decision to be made on where these knives go and these knives can just decide the game which means one of the two players is going to be very upset another great example of this is flame juggler which dealt one random damage to an enemy and this may not seem that big of a deal but in an early game board state this could decide the future of the game it is important to note that blizzard has basically stopped making cards like this the only one in recent memory is devolving missiles but yeah they haven't really done this type of rng in a while and that's a very good thing when it comes to hearthstone if you had to ask me what's the worst example of RNG, it would be Implosion and Crackle. These two cards are the definition of a no fun card because one person is always going to be in a very poor spot when one of these cards are played. Because of the nature of these two cards, you don't actually know how much damage these cards are going to do when you play them, which is already not great design, but sometimes you're going to get a high roll, sometimes you're going to low roll, and one person is going to feel absolutely horrible, which leads to the worst form of RNG in Hearthstone. There is a lot of bad forms of RNG in this game, and I'm not going to mention every single version of them. You could probably see a couple cards I'm putting on screen right now just to showcase my point even further, but there is a lot of good randomness in Hearthstone. These well-designed RNG cards makes Hearthstone a better game. One of the best examples that came early on in Hearthstone is the spare parts from Goblin vs. Gnomes. Let's look at Clockwork Gnome, which was a 1 mana 2-1 neutral minion death rattle at a spare part card to your hand. Clockwork Gnome fulfills the role of making each of your Hearthstone games feel a little bit different based on what spare part you get. It's a little bit skill intensive knowing when to use your spare part at the right time. Maybe you try to get the maximum value or maybe you wait for the perfect situation, but it's a card that doesn't really do much, but it is random every single time and it adds a little bit variety to a Hearthstone game. The other really good thing about spare parts is that there's only seven of them, which means that it's very easy to deduce what spare part your opponent could be holding in their hand if they have not played it yet. And all the spare parts, even though they do something, is not impactful enough just to win a game on its own. Another 
really good example of RNG is Spell Slinger, which adds a random spell to each player's hand. Now, this is obviously a much more varied than the spare part example I gave, but the biggest aspect of Spell Slinger is that it's a great way to make a story in Hearthstone without affecting the board in the early game. Spell Slinger is a perfect example of a card that makes each Hearthstone game feel very unique and creates memorable stories because of the cards that it generates. And sure, some of the time you're going to have cases where your opponent plays a Spell Slinger and they get the perfect card that helps them win the game, but that variance is so unlikely with such a widespread of cards that this could possibly give. But most of the time with a card like Spell Slinger, you're going to get a card that doesn't really fit your archetype or just makes the game a little bit more wacky. And those are the circumstances that lead to a healthy, randomly generated card. Arguably the best definition of RNG in Hearthstone is the keyword discover. This is a perfect example of randomness because this gives the player agency over the randomness that is being presented. Let's look at the card Pandarian Importer, which is a two minute one three neutral minion with the battle cry to discover a spell that didn't start in your deck. Now, obviously the cards that are presented by the importer are completely random, but the ability to choose which card you get is controlled RNG and gives player the agency to decide which card they think is necessary in the current game of Hearthstone. This adds a skill element to a otherwise just randomly generated card. And on top of this, this is what creates stories for a lot of players thinking back to, wow, I discovered this card from this card and it led me to do this. And that was really cool. As much as I am a huge fan of the discover mechanic, that does not mean that Hearthstone has always done it in a very healthy way. Sometimes when there's too much discover in a game of Hearthstone, it leads to the player just kind of losing track of what's going on. And it feels like the game just came down to randomness rather than controlled variants. We saw a very good example of this with the priest class in Forged in the Baron. Because of a lot of cards that they had access to were able to discover a spell, it led to a lot of games where it felt like one card discovered another spell that could discover another spell that could discover another spell, which leads the player to really feel a lot less into the game because it's just a bunch of random cards that they can't really play against. Even though discover can be used in an unhealthy way, this mechanic keeps on coming back time and time again because it rewards good decision making and it builds stories in your Hearthstone games that can be very memorable. The final form of RNG I'm going to talk about in this video is what I like to call the game deciders. Sometimes RNG takes the wheel and wins you the game or just loses you the game entirely. The best example of this is Yogg Saron. When you look at competitive Hearthstone with Yogg Saron in it, it becomes an absolute joke because a lot of games can be decided by complete randomness. But on the flip side of this, a lot of casual players really like Yogg Saron. Yogg Saron is a very powerful game ending card, but the main benefit of a card like Yogg Saron is the stories that you'll be able to tell after you play it. There has never been a card that has told more stories, had more clips, had more insane moments than this singular card. If you ask me, that is the sole reason why they printed Puzzle Box of Yogg Saron and Rune of the Archmage, because these are the type of cards that produce the most stories out of any other card that's ever been printed in a game of Hearthstone. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Let me know what you think of RNG in Hearthstone in a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. You look fantastic.